The following is a presentation of TFNN. Let's go to our uh, first call of the day. We'll talk to John in Austin, Texas. How are you doing today, John? Way too good, Cam. Appreciate what you're doing. You do such a great job. This show is fantastic every day. Uh, you're a good man, John. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Live at TFNN, Breakout Investing with your host, Ken Shreve. Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Thursday. Welcome to another edition of Breakout, investing on TFNN, 877-927-6648. That's the number to use if you want to give me a call, talk about this market ahead of what else is new, a pivotal jobs report on Friday. A reminder that my show airs every day now on TFNN from 3 to 4 Eastern. If you can't listen live, don't worry about it. Head over to iTunes. You can pick it up as a podcast and a lot of good apps in uh, Apple is uh, offering right now where you can get easy a a access to podcasts uh, like mine. So uh, don't forget to uh, check out the uh, App Store uh, with Apple. And uh, don't forget you can listen to all TFNN programming on your smartphone. Just type in tfnn.mobi in your smartphone browser and you can listen to the stream that way as well. We'll uh, look at some index charts to start off today. If you want to look at those charts live right along with me, you can do that with Tiger TV right on the homepage of tfnn.com. Channel 1, the show is <coughs> Excuse me, Channel 1, the show is carried live. And it is archived on Channel 13. Tiger TV is also viewable on your handheld device as well. Let's uh, start by taking a look at a chart of the Dow. We don't normally start with the Dow, but uh, you know what? We're four days into a rally attempt for the blue chip index here. A uh, decent percentage gain for the Dow, up 1%, about 133 points to 13,229. Volume on the New York Stock Exchange has been picking up the pace. We're tracking pretty close right now to what we saw uh, yesterday. Volume on the New York Stock Exchange on Wednesday was a little bit above average at 821 million shares. So a uh, nice day of accumulation for the Dow. Let's uh, move over, take a look at the S&P 500, see where we're at here. S&P 500, uh, still below its 50-day moving average. You can see here we are, uh, what is this? You know, I'm going to call this I'm going to call this day three of a rally attempt for the S&P 500. So when it comes to the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ, we could conceivably see follow through tomorrow. If the market decides to respond positively to the employment report, which is a possibility at this point, it's kind of up in the air, but we can't rule out that possibility. Uh, we do see a big percentage gain in higher volume to end the week. That would qualify as follow through, a little buy signal from the uh, major averages. Uh, if we do get follow through uh, tomorrow, uh, it doesn't mean that uh, a major uptrend is about to begin. Certainly that's possible. We could even just have a tradable rally on our hands where, uh, you know, who knows, maybe you get a 5, 6, 7, 8% pop in the uh, market, uh, could present some profit opportunity. So uh, can't get too bearish here. Uh, obviously, you know, we've been talking on my show in recent uh, uh, recent weeks about the uh, uh, distribution in the NASDAQ composite, particularly the weak chart of Apple, uh, Amazon, you know, decent uh, earnings from that company. It started to rally, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of broken charts out there. So it uh, doesn't look great. And, um, but, you know, we, we could see, we could see follow through as early as uh, tomorrow. So S&P 500 also up uh, about 1.1% now to 14.27. See this 50-day moving average here. It's probably going to take a lot of volume to, to get this index over what could be a resistance level right here. So the S&P 500 at 14.27, its 50-day moving average is at 14.34. So it's got another seven points to go uh, to get to its 50-day line. NASDAQ Composite. Uh, not outperforming today. Most of the indices are just, uh, yeah, it is actually outperforming a little bit. Composite up 1.4% now to 3,019. And uh, NASDAQ Composite is day three of a rally attempt here. So tomorrow uh, would be day four of a rally attempt for the index. So we'll see what happens. Uh, the jobs report 
tomorrow. We are looking for, or not we, but the consensus estimate is looking for job growth of 125,000 from 114,000 in September. Earlier today, we had the ADP employment change that showed private sector employment up 158,000 in October. The estimate was for 140,000, so a little bit better than expected there. Pretty good reading on weekly jobless claims as well. They were down 9,000 last week to 363,000. The prior week was revised lower to 372,000 from an initially reported 375,000. Uh, also today we had the ISM Manufacturing Index for October come in slightly uh, better than expected at 51.7. The consensus estimate was for a reading of 51. The 51.7 reading in October was slightly higher than what we saw in September, which was 51.5. So any reading above 50 in that ISM manufacturing index indicates expansion below 50 contraction. Conference Board also came out with a nice reading on consumer confidence today. The index came in at 72.5. Two, a nice increase from a downwardly revised 68.4 in September. The reading of 72.2 was uh, mostly in line with uh, expectations, but uh, the highest reading, I believe, since February 2008. So that's uh, that's what we got um, going on here. Folks, don't forget, uh, as far as I know, we're going to be announcing a, a winner today for the Great Panther Silver Halloween giveaway. We started it yesterday. It was pushed back a couple days because of the, uh, the, the terrible storm that hit the East Coast. But um, we started it yesterday. Uh, we'll continue it today, and we'll continue it tomorrow as well. But Great Panther Silver, along with TFNN, they're giving away a free piece of silver every hour between 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. Eastern uh, today and tomorrow. So register on the homepage of TFNN.com for your chance to win. Taking a look at gold today. And we'll do that with the GLD here, see what the Spider Gold Trust is up to with about 45 minutes left to go in Thursday session. GLD down 46 cents to 166.37, starting to live underneath its 50-day moving average here, broke below that support level uh, last week. It looks like the GLD is probably ready to base and consolidate gains for a little while. Um, we had uh, gold for December delivery today fall three dollars and sixty cents, two tenths of a percent to one thousand seven hundred fifteen dollars and fifty cents an ounce. We did hear from Barrick Gold ABX earlier today. They reported earnings. This is a bit of a, a laggard here. Uh, other gold names acting much better than Barrick Gold. Uh, it did move above its 50-day moving average yesterday, but the stock's having a rough day today. Down, look at this decline, down 9.3% to 36.74 as earnings, uh, I, did I say 96.74? 36.74 for uh, Barrick Gold, down 9.3% uh, earlier today. The company reported profit of 85 cents a share, but that was down 38% from a year ago. Sales uh, down 13% to $3.4 billion. Uh, next week, we're going to hear from GOLD, which is Rangold Resources. GOLD, this is a much healthier chart here. Rangold today up 38 cents to 119.97. Uh, earnings uh, next week, uh, November 7th, for Rangold Resources. Uh, it is expected to earn $1.28 a share. That would be up 11% from a year ago. Sales up 19% to $366.5 million. So no doubt Rangold Resources still holding near highs above its 50-day moving average, not doing anything wrong, that's for sure, ahead of uh, earnings. We'll see if they can deliver good numbers next week. Uh, crude oil, December oil up 85 cents, 1% to 87.09 at the New York Merck. Uh, earlier today, uh, weekly supply data showed an unexpected decline in weekly crude supplies. Big day of earnings, uh, big week of earnings. Uh, next week, I should say, uh, we're going to hear from Transocean. 
on Monday. Here's a look at rig. Kind of a tired looking stock here, not uh, not showing much in the way of an uptrend. Uh, stock is up 33 cents to 46.02. Also on Monday, we'll hear from EOG Resources and McDermott. Uh, Tuesday, Quicksilver. And on Wednesday, a couple of uh, couple of oil and gas producers with pretty good fundamentals. Uh, Continental Resources, CLR, and Concho Resources, CXO. They'll be reporting next Wednesday. Let's check in on BCEI. This is Bonanza Creek Energy, a name I've been talking about recently, really showing outstanding relative price strength in this market. It's a small cap company, market cap of just over $900 million. They're based in Denver. They do have uh, operations not only in the Rocky Mountains, but also in southern Arkansas in the mid-continent region. Uh, fast growth here. Earnings going to be coming out uh, November 8th, which I believe is Thursday. But earnings expected to be up 217% from a year ago to 38 cents a share. Sales up 115% to 27.4 million. So good fundamentals, good technicals at Bonanza Creek Energy ahead of earnings next week. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mentioned the economic data that we saw earlier today. It's, uh, you know, hopefully we'll uh, hear some good news from the employment report uh, tomorrow how the market responds to it is uh, is anybody's uh, guess but uh, you know not not too bad a day uh, so far for the market at all we did have a lot of uh, retailers report same store same store sales data uh, earlier today wanted to check in on uh, a couple of retailers here we'll take a look uh, start uh, by looking at Costco very very strong performer in the market here Costco Looks like it's going to face some resistance here at the 50-day moving average here. More good numbers from the uh, Warehouse Club, same store sales, uh, up 7%. Uh, nice base breakout for Costco in late June. This is all the way back in this area here where it broke out, and uh, right now it's forming another base. So certainly not viable here when a stock is underneath its 50-day moving average. It's, it's basing, it's consolidating gains right now. I'd like just, just wait and see if Costco can complete the base by forming the right side. Maybe you see renewed signs of institutional uh, buying in the stock. But certainly when it started to fall from 102 down to, you know, 90. 596 here there were there were some pretty big sellers in the stock no question about it a little bit of accumulation on the way back up but still that 50 day moving average at 98 91 could be uh, resistance for now so good numbers from Costco stock uh, not responding it's down 73 cents to 9770 its 50 day moving average is at 9891 Macy's uh, same store sales from the department store they're reporting earnings next week big rally today for shares of Macy's up 6.5 Four percent to forty fifty two. Same store sales up four point one percent. Again, earnings uh, next week on November seventh. Uh, uh, Macy's has had a hard time uh, getting going. This is a stock that initially tried to break out over a swing point of forty eighty right here. Here was the the breakout. It was quickly turned away. Came right down to its two hundred day moving average, but outperforming nicely today. So uh, definitely an improved technical picture after today's uh, nice heavy volume move. All right, folks, uh, headed into break number one. You're listening to Breakout Investing on TFNN. We'll be right back. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesamento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing.
you've always taken the long view when it comes to investing. But what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. Millionaires are made every day. The fact is, living your dreams is possible. Someone, somewhere is going to get rich. My recommendation is, let that be you. Each day, someone is making the decision to better themselves and creating a plan to fulfill their financial dreams. Let that be you. The key to turning dreams into reality is to take massive action. Let that be you. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Master Show with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN. And I can help you with your journey to great wealth. I'll show you how to create the ultimate financial edge, a set of tools, insights, and strategies that are part of my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability. You'll have direct access to me by phone, email, and my private library of trading and investing secrets for 30 days with an unconditional money-back guarantee. I'll take your trading to the next level. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and turn your dreams into reality. Mastering Probability, folks. Let that be you. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. This segment is brought to you by Goldfields. For more information, just click the Goldfields banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, everyone, to Breakout Investing on TFNN. Ken Shreve with you. Folks, uh, don't forget, if you want to check out my weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, you can do that right on the homepage of TFNN.com. You can find it in a couple of areas under breaking news it says uh, try out ultimate growth stocks or you can also click on the newsletters tab at the top of the home page then click on investment newsletters and check out 30 days free of my growth stock newsletter I publish an extensive weekly update every Tuesday and then in between updates I send out buy alerts sell alerts for the model portfolio and also general market updates, what I am seeing happening. So before we went into the first break, talking about some uh, same-store sales data from uh, some of the nation's retailers, very, very busy day of economic data and headlines and movers and all that, but uh, Macy's having a nice day today, uh, taking a look at shares of Target. Kind of a similar situation to Costco. Potential resistance here at the 50-day moving average. Shares of Target down 1.3% to 62.93. Uh, beautiful breakout for Target back in uh, July. Here was the, the uh, initial breakout, and now it's just forming another base here. So forming another base, uh, having some problems right around its 50-day moving average here. Uh, not a stock that is buyable uh, in terms of the buy rules that uh, I follow. Same store sales up 2.4% at Target. Looking a little bit tired here, looking like it's ready to take a little breather after a really a, a big move between uh, July 
uh, through September. Uh, also, LTD, is there ever a month where that goes by where Limited does not report um, nice numbers? They did, they did again. Uh, the stock is off its uh, session low, only down 42 cents right now to 47.47. Of course, Limited, uh, well, you may or may not know, they own Victoria's Secret and also uh, Bath and Body Works, uh, two two big uh, brands for uh, limited same store sales up three percent. The company also raised its third quarter profit outlook to a range of twenty three to twenty five cents a share. That was uh, compared to an earlier view of fifteen to twenty cents. Uh, the consensus estimate right now is twenty one cents. So it was uh, definitely a raised outlook, not only above their prior forecast, but also above what uh, analysts are expecting. Uh, this is another stock that tried to uh, to break out recently and did not have much luck, uh, similar to uh, Macy's, came down to its 200-day uh, moving average here. So it's still sitting above a long-term support level, but another stock that looks like it's ready to uh, base for a little while here. Uh, TJX, a uh, big standout performer in retail, but uh, boy, this one really has uh, fallen on hard times, really starting in uh, August, but it's been a, been a huge market winner. Uh, it was a $46 stock back in early September. Now it's down uh, at 42.16 up 1.3% today, but look at this trading all the way at its session low after hitting an intraday high of 43.21. Uh, so this is a lot of technical damage, a lot of institutional selling in uh, TJX, a little bit of a uh, rotation going on clearly out of uh, some of these discount retailers, TJX, and uh, I would suspect Ross Stores, ROST, would have a, a similar looking chart here, and yes, indeed, uh, bull stocks have been in you know, nasty downtrends for a while. Shares of raw stores down 6% today to 57.27. Don't have the same store sales data handy for them, but uh, institutional selling in raw stores uh, continues. Uh, some big earnings movers today. Uh, take a look at SourceFire. Uh, fundamentals had always been pretty strong here, but boy, has this one really been beaten down since early September. It was a, what, $57, $58 stock. Goes all the way down to 42 Now it's up almost 13% today to 48.26. SourceFire is a provider of network security, hardware, and software. Earnings were up 32% from a year ago to 25 cents a share. Sales up 30% to 58.8 million. So uh, clearly investors uh, like what they see in SourceFire today. Uh, big move higher, but uh, again, you know, pretty, pretty common uh, story these stocks that, that crater below support, now that they're working their way higher, these uh, support levels often turn into resistance, and that looks to be the case with SourceFire here as it's uh, uh, still underneath its 50-day moving average. Uh, how about Cirrus? After the close, uh, after the close yesterday, Cirrus reported earnings. A lot of sellers in the stock today. We talked about Cirrus on the show yesterday, starting to show some uh, some uh, really kind of shaky action around its 50-day moving average here. But shares of Cirrus down 10% today to 36.65. Uh, we'll talk about Cirrus earnings when we get when we get back. There are some concerns about gross margins here. 60% uh, of Cirrus's uh, revenue comes from Apple, and with Apple acting as weak as it is. Uh, um, yeah, not surprising to see Cirrus um, not acting well either. We'll be right back, folks. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and Dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. If 
you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intra-week trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. TFNN and Great Panther Silver have teamed up for another exciting silver giveaway. The Great Panther Silver Halloween giveaway will be taking place at the end of October, and for three full days, we'll be giving away silver coins and bars every hour from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. to one lucky winner randomly chosen. There's no purchase necessary. For more information and to fill out your registration form today, simply visit the front page of TFNN.com where you'll find all the details. October 29th, 30th, and 31st, we'll choose one one lucky winner that will receive a silver coin or bar courtesy of Great Panther Silver. Winners will be announced live on the air each hour for three full days. Don't miss out on this great opportunity to win free silver from TFNN and Great Panther Silver. Register today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. And for more information on Great Panther Silver, you can click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE Amex, symbol GPL, or on the Toronto Stock Exchange, symbol GPR. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the technical corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by Direction Shares. To learn more about technical tools for the sophisticated active investor, hit the Direction Shares banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, everyone, to Breakout Investing on TFNN. Yeah, take a look at Cirrus Logic today. I uh, mentioned during yesterday's show that the stock was looking vulnerable ahead of uh, earnings. And you know, just because the stock looks vulnerable ahead of earnings doesn't mean it's destined to go lower. I've seen some really bad stock charts in recent weeks that have all of a sudden, you know, these stocks have just, you know, broken out in heavy volume. And the charts uh, certainly weren't saying that it was possible that that could happen. But uh, Cirrus looked vulnerable, and it is under a lot of selling pressure today. Uh, Cirrus is an audio chip designer. Its uh, uh, chips are in the iPhone, the iPad. Uh, they do about 60% of uh, its revenue comes from Apple, so pretty heavily reliant on uh, Apple. Earnings were up 139% from a year ago to $0.79 cents a share. That was $0.08 cents above the consensus estimate. Sales up 91% to $193.8 million. That was uh, about 13 million above the consensus estimate. So people will say, well, gee, that's really great bottom line and top line growth. Why is the stock uh, selling off? You know, it really doesn't matter. All I can say is there are big sellers in the stock today. So haven't looked at uh, Apple today. We'll see if Apple is uh, participating with the NASDAQ's rally and a uh, pretty feeble rally, right, for Apple here up 56 cents, uh, up 
one tenth of one percent today, still trying to hold on to its uh, 50 day moving average. Uh, excuse me, its 200 day moving average. So, this is a, definitely a concern. A, a, a stock like Apple that makes up close to 20 percent of the NASDAQ 100 uh, index. I mean, if this thing, obviously, it's broken down in recent weeks, but if it does ultimately take out this 200 day moving average with some volume, and institutional selling in the stock continues. Uh, I can't imagine that would be a good thing for the tech sector overall. The question right now, is, can the NASDAQ keep continue its rally here without Apple? And I suppose it, it could happen, but it really would be nice to see Apple start to right the ship here uh, on a day when the NASDAQ composite is up what 1.4 percent Apple is basically unchanged on the day it did hit an intraday high of 603 it is uh, back near its low at 595.88 uh, let's go ahead and check in on the Nasdaq here see what's going on with about 25 minutes left to go in a Thursday's session Nasdaq is still holding up near its high up 1.3 percent to 3014 uh, day three of a rally attempt for the Nasdaq composite that means the earliest we could see some follow-through or confirmation of the latest rally attempt would be uh, tomorrow S&P 500 up nine tenths of a percent close to 13 points to 1412 it is still holding near its high as well so overall not uh, not too bad a day for the market here we also had earnings from visa late wednesday visa making a nice move today up 3.3 percent to 143 39. Tough stock to buy up here. It has been running for some time. I prefer when I buy growth stocks. I mean, I understand that Visa's fundamental picture is pretty solid here. I also understand that it's a stock that, you know, continues to be uh, bought, but I just kind of feel like I'm chasing it up here. I don't own it. Uh, it's tempting to buy stocks that are moving higher like this and you know, showing good signs of accumulation, but the bottom line is just, just too extended up here. So uh, that's going to be the case. Uh, Visa authorized a new $1.5 billion share buyback program. Their earnings were up 21% from a year ago to $1.54. Uh, that was four cents above the consensus estimate. Sales up 15% to 2.73 billion. That was slightly ahead of estimates. Uh, yesterday we heard from Mastercard. We'll check in on Mastercard. It made a nice move yesterday. It's uh, extending gains today, working on its third straight uh, price gain here. Shares of Mastercard up another one and a half percent to 467.72, but it is trading uh, well off its intraday high of 475 thereabouts. So, uh, pretty good numbers from Mastercard yesterday. Good numbers from Visa uh, today. Let's also take a look at ELLI. This is a name that many of you may not be familiar with, but man, uh, a stock that. Uh, wait, is this E? Do I have the right one here? Hmm. That doesn't quite look right to me. Ellie, Ellie May, E L L I. Let me just double check another source here. E L L I. Ellie May. Yeah, I guess uh, I guess this is it. This is uh, Ellie May. They're uh, basically a provider of on-demand business automation software for the mortgage industry. Earnings were really solid here, but this looks like a stock that is um, starting to look a little bit broken here. You see a break below the 50-day moving average recently. Some pretty clear, unequivocal institutional selling uh, in this stock, but Ellie May down 6.3% today to 2342 big bottom line and uh, top line growth for the company but again stock that looks like it is ready to uh, base and consolidate gains for a little while um, overall you know I'm I'm optimistic about this market I think there's a possibility that we could rally uh, we could see a nice little rally between uh, now and the end of the year again there has been significant distribution in the NASDAQ there's been significant distribution in Apple uh, you know you look at a chart like uh, Amazon you know they reported earnings uh, last week this one's been uh, hit pretty hard by heavy volume selling so when you see these market leaders show the the type of price action that they've been showing in recent weeks it uh, it can often presage more market weakness but uh, it's not always the case uh, you do have you know stocks out there that are still holding up uh, okay the uh, financials for example the XLF 
Take a look at the financial select sector spider fund. Uh, you know, still holding its 50-day moving average here, trading pretty well. Uh, it's up 1% today to 16.06. So still, still seeing some. Guess what you would say? It's a cliche, but still seeing some green uh, shoots out there. And again, you know, market. Uh, how it responds to tomorrow's employment report, I think it's going to give us a, a pretty good idea of what uh, what direction in the near term this um, this market wants to uh, go. Uh, let's check in on uh, Catamaran, too, CTRX. This is an uh, interesting company. They're a provider of pharmacy benefit management services, CTRX. Uh, earlier this year, they spent a little more than $4 billion to acquire another pharmacy benefit management services provider, uh, Catalyst Health Solutions. So you're seeing really huge top-line growth in recent quarters for Catamaran Corporation. Uh, big day for the stock today, up 8.6% to 51.21. Uh, earnings only up 14% from a year ago to $0.25 cents a share. That was a penny above the consensus estimate. Sales were up 148% to $3.19 billion, just a little bit below the consensus estimate, but a lot of uh, sellers in Catamaran ahead of uh, its earnings report, but a lot of buyers in the stock today. So good, uh, good earnings from Catamaran. Home builders just keep delivering the goods. Uh, MDC Holdings. This is a company based in uh, Denver. Off its highs, big gap up for the stock today, up a little more than six percent to forty fifty nine. Another one that I'm cautious of uh, buying up here. The home builders. Um, uh, it just that they've been running for for so long if you don't have exposure to the sector it's kind of risky in my opinion chasing them up here but uh, I do have some exposure to the home building sector with an ETF and the ultimate growth stocks model uh, portfolio but when it comes to the individual home building names there there are tricky buys up here for sure uh, MDC let's take a look at a weekly chart for MDC because this has been a you know it's been a monster monster performer here. Here's MDC Holdings and you can see a big big base that formed here and then a, a, a nice a nice little breakout for MDC um, in late June. That's really when the when the group really started to move so I suppose you could say this is a little flat base uh, forming up here but um, you know just such a such a massive uh, price move uh, for pretty much most of 2012. Tough one to chase up here. Uh, the earnings were outstanding. I mean, it's no reason, uh, not, not a surprise to see the stock moving like it is today. They earned 41 cents a share. The, that was more than double what, the consent, what analysts were looking for. They lost 68 cents in the year ago quarter. So uh, nice earnings at MDC. Sales were up 58% from a year ago to 335.1 million. So big top line growth at uh, MDC and uh, you know technically still still looking solid here uh, but again you know it's a, a twenty dollar stock that is now a forty dollar stock so and that that price move was uh, made in a fairly fairly quick time frame so nice earnings from MDC and uh, let's also check in on OCN Aquen Aquen Financial OCN they are a uh, a provider of residential and commercial mortgage loan servicing services, I guess you'd say. Aquin having a tough time here, uh, down 7.7 percent to 35.59. So it's interesting to see these strong price performers on a nice update for the market. A lot of these big, big winners over the past uh, several months under a lot of selling pressure today. So Aquin, I would not look at this stock uh, like it's on sale here. You know, a stock that was uh, $40, now it's uh, 35 uh, Don't try to catch a falling knife here because there are big sellers in the stock today. Uh, support could be at its 50-day moving average at $30.50, but it's at thirty-five fifty-nine right now. So if it does uh, come down and, and find heavy volume support at its 50-day moving average, uh, that might be an area to, to nibble, but I would, with the with the tide clearly flowing negative in this stock right now, I would step aside and uh, wait for it to 
uh, settle down a little bit. Uh, WPI, this is a name that I trimmed uh, in my model portfolio. It's been a big winner, took some money off the table ahead of earnings, and uh, we'll see right now the stock is up $1.75. It is uh, trading near its session low after early strength, another big, big mover in recent months. So I basically cut the position uh, in half. I'm still holding on to, uh, to some, but Watson Pharmaceuticals had a very nice uh, quarter. Uh, a day... Uh, yesterday, Watson announced the completion of its $5.9 billion acquisition of Swiss partner Activist. Uh, Watson is going to change its name to Activist in 2013, but uh, the bottom line and top line growth was there once again for Watson, ticker WPI. Earnings were up 24% from a year ago to $1.35 a share. Sales up 19% to $1.28 billion. Watson, a generic drug maker that uh, really has been executing beautifully. Another strong quarter for the company. And, uh, yeah, some sellers in the stock today after it uh, it got all the way up to 90 bucks a share, and it is off its highs, but uh, still uh, a decent day. I'd never, you know, anytime I make a decision for the Ultimate Growth Stocks model portfolio to trim a position or or just get rid of a position outright, it uh, I, never, I never, ever, ever look back on those decisions. Sometimes you sell, you know, you, you trim ahead of earnings, and then the stock is up 10% on a great earnings report. Uh, you know, you make, you make, you know, sell decisions, uh, make por portfolio decisions based on available information at the time. So, you know, I, I felt good about trimming the position ahead of earnings and, um, you know, certainly don't feel bad about it uh, one day one day later, even though the stock is up, uh, you know, another 2% uh, today. Uh, so that's uh, Watson Pharmaceuticals. And uh, GNC Holdings, GNC, this is uh, uh, a former leader that has really fallen on hard times here, a broken stock. Uh, people will look at fundamentals here and say, well, how can you not want to own this thing? They continue to grow nicely. Uh, look at the selling in the stock uh, today, down 2.7% to 3761. Really can't get out of its own way here. They are a specialty retailer of health and wellness products. Same store sales at domestic company-owned stores rose an impressive 9.8%. And uh, earnings were up 33% from a year ago to 61 cents a share. And sales were up 16% to 621.6 million. But that has not kept sellers away from the uh, stock today. And uh, also we can check in on Exxon Mobil here. X X O M. Exxon Mobil, see what that's up to. I mentioned uh, next week's going to be pretty busy in the energy sector in terms of earnings reports. Exxon Mobil, another large cap name here that uh, seems to be finding some support at its 50-day moving average, working on four straight price gains here. Shares of Exxon Mobil up uh, three tenths of a percent to 91.45. Its technical picture is still intact. The uh, earnings just so-so uh, down. Earnings down two percent from a year ago to 209 a share. Uh, sales down 8% to little uh, almost 116 billion exploration production earnings declined at 29% to 5.97 billion dollars but refining and marketing earnings more than doubled to uh, almost 3.2 billion mostly due to stronger refining uh, margins Outside of earnings, that's a lot of earnings reports that we just went over, but uh, JDA Software, a uh, big move for the stock yesterday. It's kind of an interesting chart here, right? You see a big gap up on Wednesday and another huge gap up uh, today, up another 17.4% to 44.78. Uh, JDA Software Group is a provider of enterprise uh, technology software company. They agreed to be... Um, uh, to they agreed to be bought by privately held supply chain software uh, company Red Prairie Corporation for about 1.9 billion in cash. And uh, let's see how Netflix is doing here. That Carl Icahn is uh, at it again. Late uh, Wednesday, Carl Icahn took a 10% stake in Netflix in a filing. He said Netflix may hold significant strategic value for a variety of significantly larger companies that are engaging in more direct competition with one another due to the Internet, mobile, and other channels. Interesting uh, buy. We'll be right back, folks. 
In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesamento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. You've heard Tom O'Brien on the air, and you've seen him on Tiger TV, as well as being featured as a regular CNBC guest and contributor, and now you can have access to his expert trading advice each morning through his daily trading newsletter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives traders, investors, and money managers a thorough strategy for trading stocks, options, and indices every market day. Market Insights comes out each market day before 9.30 a.m., and provides traders with Tom's daily commentary, opinion, and specific trade recommendations on the markets. Using advanced Fibonacci methods, volume indicators, Gartley patterns, candlestick charting, gaps, and market timing, Market Insights will give you specific trade recommendations including entry, stop, and exit prices. The summer is over and traders are back. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to check out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, founder and CEO of TFNN, professional trader and educator, also a special guest on CNBC, analyzing the commodity markets. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Welcome back, everyone, to Breakout Investing as we put the uh, finishing touches on a, another program here. Let's check in on the markets. And, boy, we're holding gains nicely here. Volume not particularly impressive, but what else is new, right? We've got uh, NASDAQ volume tracking just a little bit higher than Wednesday's level of 1.6 billion share. NYSE volume tracking just a hair lower uh, than the 821 million shares we saw yesterday. But uh, nice percentage gains for the indices here the nasdaq composite outperforming up 
1.4%, almost 43 points to 3,020. S&P 500 next, up almost 15 points, a little over 1% to 1,426. And the Dow, up 127 points, 1% to 13,223. Mention the jobs report coming up tomorrow. The consensus estimate is for non-farm payrolls to increase by 125,000 from 114,000 in uh, September. Don't have the unemployment rate. I think it's at 7.8% right now. Maybe uh, expect it to tick just a little bit higher uh, tomorrow, but um, we'll see how the market uh, responds to it. I always I like to tend to look at the market with a glass half full perspective. Uh, still seeing some interesting uh, stock charts out there. Seeing plenty of damage charts, but seeing some interesting ones as well. Uh, Chico's Us, for example, a women's retailer. Kind of an unsung story in retail here. A company with a great track record of execution. Uh, they have earnings uh, coming up within the next uh, couple of weeks. But stock having a nice day today, up 4.5% to 1944, flirting with a little breakout here. Nice volume in uh, Chico's uh, today. Uh, after the close, we do have some earnings reports to take a look at. Let's start with uh, LNKD, LinkedIn online professional network. This one has really been hit hard by selling another example of just a stock that's been under some institutional selling. Growth prospects look really, really strong at LinkedIn. That's what's uh, that's what's confusing here. I mean, if earnings are supposed to be so good, why has the stock been under so much uh, selling pressure? So very uh, risky, acting not that great ahead of earnings, but um, it's down nine cents today to 106.84, and earnings are expected to be up 83 percent from a year ago to 11 cents a share. Sales up 75 percent to 243.9 million. So we'll see what LinkedIn has to say after the close. Uh, remember the data center operator Equinix, E Q I X. This one has plans to uh, convert to a REIT down the line. It's been under a lot of selling pressure, basing consolidating gains underneath its 50 day moving average. Not a picture of technical health at all uh, ahead of its earnings report, but we'll see what the company has to say. Shares of Equinix right now up one and a half percent to 183.23 uh, earnings expected to come in at 59 cents a share that would be up 159 percent from a year ago sales up 18 percent to 493.5 million equinix uh, due after the close remember price line you know if we do start to rally again, okay, we start to get buyers coming into the market, maybe this bond market weakness continues to, you know, continues to play out and money's moving into the to the stock market. I really don't expect names like Priceline, Intuitive Surgical, a lot of these former big market leaders, very few of them are able to resume leadership roles, especially you know, when it comes to Priceline, a stock that just is just a, a technical mess right now. It's up 2.1% uh, to 586 ahead of earnings. Uh, $11.81 a share is what's expected, up 19%, sales up 14% to $1.65 billion. But clearly, its price performance tells me there are concerns about slowing growth going forward. Coming up next, the Tom O'Brien Show. I'll see you back here as usual tomorrow. 3 o'clock Eastern for another edition of Breakout Investing. Take care, folks.